We're moments away from the men's 100 meter semi-finals and Dan O'Brien is right there amidst the drama and the tension. Dan, just a quick question for you as Coleman comes out in front of you. Do you put him down as the overwhelming favourite by the manner in which he came through the first round yesterday, not showing any signs of rustiness, having not competed since he won the US Champs at the end of July? Absolutely. I would say that he is the overwhelming favorite. And I had a, even a chance to talk to the great one, Michael Johnson, today, an old friend of mine. I was in the stadium. He just happened to come in and I said, do you pick Coleman to win tonight? And he said, absolutely. He said two or three years ago, Gatlin might have been able to run him down. But Coleman is the man to beat. He said, but watch Coleman at the end of these races. And I have to agree with Michael. Coleman has a fantastic start. He runs well through 60 and 70 meters but he gets a little ragged at the end. So if we're going to judge him, take a look at the end of that race. Thanks very much, Dan. Superb analysis there from the former world record holder, Olympic champion and multiple world champion in the decathlon, Dan O'Brien. Well, he mentioned about the cracking start that Christian Coleman enjoys. That's partly down to the fact that and partly explains why he's the world indoor record holder and the current world indoor champion, but never Jenny Meadows, has he won a senior outdoor global title? And he will feel this is his night and his stage on which to shine. Yeah, he will. He really came to prominence 2016, 2017. But he's 23 years of age now. You know, he's working his way into these senior championships. This is a great opportunity for him. He's not got Usain Bolt like he did, you know, two years ago. And he showed two years ago that he actually was really mature, just 21 years of age, to be able to handle the pressure racing against Usain Bolt. We all knew the significance that that was his last race. Of course, against Justin Gatlin, obviously he picked up the silver medal there. I would agree with everything that Dan said, and who can argue against the great Michael Johnson, of course. His start is electric but I think he might be so far in front that it doesn't matter if he's, you know, sways towards the end of that, you know, I don't think he'll be put under the pressure by anyone unless he makes a start, um, you know, a mistake at the start. So that's just a thing he can control. And really interesting that he had 10 minutes sat in that chair and he wasn't doing anything physically. It shows how much this men's 100 metres is as much a mental game as a physical game. Yes, I think the longer I've been involved in athletics, the more I've realised that your mental approach to a sprint... We always used to take the mickey out of sprinters, us middle and long distance runners, but they're operating on a knife edge of emotion. There's Lamont Jacobs, used to represent the USA. He ensures that the Italian flag has two representatives in the semi-finals. Filippo Tortu goes in the third. Tamir Burnett has worked very hard for his place in the semis. He ran in the prelims and the first round yesterday, so this is his third race over 100 metres in the space of 24 hours. He'll start on the far right of picture. Aaron Brown's in this one as well, the brilliant Canadian, and Sunny Brown of Japan on the outside in lane nine. Remember, only two guaranteed to go through. Well, the focus on this first of three semi-finals is firmly fixed on lane five, and the fastest man in the world this year, Christian Coleman. Quickest qualifier. He had time to jog at the end of his 9.98 yesterday. Will that be the same again tonight? Just a couple of hours ahead of the final. There will be three races, and it will be the first two in each of the three semi-finals who will advance to tonight's final, plus the next two. Coleman's face, a picture of concentration. Camilo de Oliveira, a big figure from Brazil. He's gone 10-0-2 this season. Jamili nearest the camera. He'll go in lane eight. We're about to get the official introductions. And this is the quality lineup. Nearest the camera. The familiar strip of the Netherlands. Semi-finalist in the European 200 metres championships last year. Tamir Burnett. Competing for the third time, having come through the prelims. He's got a very quick starter next to him. World indoor silver medalist in Birmingham last year, Bing Chan Siu. Not quite in that kind of form this year. At his lifetime best, he's a 991 man. Aaron Brown. He needs a good start here. Three times a national champion over one and 200 metres. Commonwealth silver last year. 
got to get away quickly because he's drawn alongside the rock star. Christian Coleman, the fastest man in the world this year, joint seventh fastest in history. He believes this is his year and his time. Paolo Andro Camilo de Oliveira to give him his full names. Well, student games gold over one and 200 metres, getting closer to that big 10 second barrier. So too is Lamont uh, Jacobs, 10.07 in qualification, 10.03 his best, used to represent USA. Adam Jamili, European champion a few years ago over the 200 metres. He looked really good in qualification and he's getting a nice reception from the crowd. Can he get close to his lifetime best and duck under 10 seconds? He's got exactly the same PB as Abdul Hakim Sani Brown, made the final two years ago at the age of just 18. He's a former World Youth gold medalist. The first semi-final of the men's 100 metres. Burnett, Netherlands in two. Sue, China in three. Brown, Canada four. Coleman in lane five. Camilo de Oliveira in six. Jacobs, seven. Jamili, Great Britain, eight. Sani Brown, Japan in lane nine. Only the first two will advance into the climax of the evening in a couple of hours' time. Coleman looked effortless in the heat. Will it be the same again when the pressure begins to grow? Coleman in lane five in this first semi-final. Set. It's another good start from Christian Coleman, who's up into his running. Aaron Brown of Canada's got some work to do here. It's a blanket finish for the rest of them. Wow, very, very tight for second. 9.88. He really is beginning to strut his stuff. He's already bounding off the track. He's racked it up by a tenth of a second. 9.98 in the first round, 9.88 in the second round. Adam Jamili was there or thereabouts in the dip, but it's Brown who's been given the second spot with 10.12. So close for that spot. A hundredth of a second behind him comes Jamili. So it's Aaron Brown who joins Christian Coleman in the final. Jamili knows that 10.13 probably isn't going to be enough to go through as the fastest loser. Well, no disrespect to the other seven, you were watching two different races. Yeah, we were. In fact, I did actually think Coleman didn't have the best start. His reaction was good, but he almost did a bit of a trip step. But one step after that, he was just, he can do something that the others just can't do. He almost finds an extra half a metre in the first couple of steps that the others can't do. And once he's up into his running, he's away. He looks so relaxed and so confident. It was all going on behind him. Brown's taken second in 10-1-2. Jamili, 10-1-3. De Oliveira, 10-1-4. Sonny Brown, 10-1-5. But Coleman was in a class of his own. Very, very tight for the second spot, but no doubting the man who shone there, Christian Coleman one race away from becoming the world champion. Aaron Brown will be in the final with him. Johan Blake, world champion after Usain Bolt's false start in Daegu way back in 2011. He is the joint second fastest man in history. He's not in that kind of shape now, but he is still in sub-10 second form. He's one of five in this race to have gone under 10 seconds this season this is so tough this semi-final it really is he's drawn in the lane next to Justin Gatlin Gatlin has walked halfway down the home straight the only other time I've ever seen him do that as we look at G the Asian champion over 200 meters he'll be on the outside in nine he's got a best of 9.97 the Swedish fans are still buoyed after Daniel Stahl's epic throw in the discus.
The only time I've seen Gatlin walk that far down a home straight was when he walked all the way down to the finish line ahead of winning the world title in Helsinki in 2005. Blake in the foreground, Gatlin in the background. But they're not the only class acts here. De Grasse goes in seven. Here is the complete lineup for what could be described as the nightmare semi final. So much quality here, so much talent, but only room for two automatically in the climax of the evening, the big final. Blake and Gatlin, the most recognisable names perhaps, but don't forget Andre de Grasse, bronze medalist in 2015 and in the Rio Olympics. He's come back from a couple of hamstring problems. He's not too far away from his lifetime best shape and de Grasse goes in seven and he'll fancy the job tonight. That's Koika. He's the fifth of the men who've got inside 10 seconds this season with a PB. There will be huge tension on that start line. They all know the quality of the men alongside them. Blake goes in four, Gatlin in five. OJ Edeburen, semi-finalist in the European Champs a couple of years ago, national champion at the fifth time of asking in Birmingham. Yuki Koika, Asian Games champion last year, over 200 metres in pretty sweltering conditions in Indonesia. Inside 10 seconds this season. The double silver medalist from the London Olympic Games. The world champion from 2011. He's pumped and he's going to have to be because this will be tough. The defending champion, the fifth fastest man in history, still flying high at the age of 37, Justin Gatlin. Raymond Nikevwo, the Nigerian. African Games gold medalist this year, 10-1-4 in qualification. He's in the best shape we've ever seen. He's shaken off the hamstring injuries that gave him a torrid two years after becoming a global medalist at the Worlds in Beijing and in Rio. De Grasse is back. Emmanuel Matadi, really good qualification yesterday. He looks more like a heavyweight boxer than a sprinter. He's an enormous man with big talent, tantalizingly close to 10 seconds. Shen Yi Zi, Asian champion over 200 oh. meters. He's got a PB inside 10 seconds. Not quite this season. So hard to predict how this is going to go. Edda Boren, Great Britain in two. Koika Japan in three. Blake in the familiar yellow of Jamaica in four. Gatlin in five, the defending champion. Akevwo, Nigeria six. De Grasse, Canada seven. Matadi. Liberia in eight. And Xi, China in lane nine. The second semi-final of the men's 100 metres. An absolutely loaded field but only two guaranteed to appear in the final. Blake and Gatlin side by side, their faces a picture of concentration. <laughs> Gatlin and Blake have got away well, and Z on the near side trying to get into his running. Edebora now, but it looks like it's Oh, very, very tight. De Grasse may well have come through for that one. Blake, I think, might, might have just outdipped Justin Gatlin. It was very, very close. De Grasse left it late. I thought Blake was going to take it. But he came through the Canadian brilliantly in lane seven. We're still waiting for the official confirmation. But De Grasse knows that he's taken that. He's back to form and he's in the final. The question is, is it Blake or Gatlin to join him? And I think it might be the Jamaican. That was a very tight one. Edge of boring from Great Britain on the inside lane in lane two had a fantastic start. Johan Blake looked like he was almost messing around a little bit. Um, I don't know whether he just gave a little bit away, but I think he might have snuck into second place. He did. He outdipped Justin Gatlin. They've been given exactly the same time, 10.09. Tegras took it by two hundredths of a second. Blake and Gatlin, 10.09. But I thought Blake might have just managed to outdip the defending champion, and that means Depending on how fast the third semi-final is, Gatlin may not make the final. 
Well, that's not what we would expect at all. And you can actually see the reactions there. Edja Boren was the, indeed the quickest away. Look at him there on the inside lane. And it took Blake a while, didn't he? He was maybe half a metre up there on Gatlin. They then come... See, look, Blake is looking, he's looking at Gatlin, completely forgot about De Grasse. You can't do this. These are professional athletes. You go all the way to the line. But Blake now starts to look. He has a look. He has another. Meanwhile, DeGrasse is focusing on that finish line, and he comes through. Good analysis there from Jenny Meadows. And yes, Blake just took his eye off the ball there a little bit. You could see him drift towards the left-hand side of his lane as he was looking at it. He did enough, but he finished behind DeGrasse. Andre de Grasse announces his intentions for this big final. He takes it ahead of Johan Blake. Gatlin is in a fastest non-qualifier position at the moment, but there's one semi-final still to come. Wow. I wasn't expecting Gatlin to be that tight, were you? I wasn't. I think Blake was just thinking it was going to be against himself and Gatlin and you can see him there, he, he'll know that he's made a mistake. He just switched off after 90 metres and, you know, that showboating and that kind of camaraderie and trying to get that psychological advantage. You can actually see there in the photo finish that Blake is not even looking where he's going. And Gatlin, he almost did it because Blake, you know, caused that mistake to himself. OK, if you're enjoying our live coverage, thank you for keeping us company. The times to watch out for, Justin Gatlin, 10.09. Adam Jamili from the first of the semi-finals, 10.13. Those are the two times occupying the non-automatic qualifier spots at the moment. Wow, plenty of drama this evening. Now, there were five men who've gone inside 10 seconds in the second semi-final, and there are four in this one. Taekwondo Tracy of Jamaica will be in this race. Jimmy Vico, well, he's had a pretty quiet season. The Frenchman is the joint European record holder, his lifetime best 9.86. He's not really in that kind of shape, but I thought his run in the heats yesterday was the best we've seen from him this season. Arthur Cisse, African Championship silver this year, semi finalist in the world indoors last year. He's in the best shape of his life. A lot of people excited about Zarnell Hughes, last year's European champion. Excellent 200-metre runner. When he gets it right, he looks quite smooth and he might fancy the job here tonight. But, Jenny, perhaps the really, really big names here would be Akane Sambini, the African and Commonwealth champion, and Mike Rogers, the Pan American Games winner there, the veteran from the United States. Those would be the standout names, but the likes of Cisse and Vico and Hughes, more than capable, of deposing the uh, the two fancied men and getting themselves in the final. Yeah, I think we've seen a lot from Heat 2 that you can't always go to the farm book. All of these athletes will be here. They've known all season that this championships lies when it is. They've got themselves ready for the end of September, beginning of October. But we were really impressed, weren't we, in qualification of Simbini. He looked very, very good. A shade outside 10 seconds. 10-0-1 in a heat last night. Yeah, he was brilliant, Simbine, he really was. Considering how tough it is for the South Africans, they're almost heading into their summer. Yeah, they, their season starts January, February, March. So he's had to keep this form going for, well, OK, it's not 12 months, but it's not far off. Zarnell Hughes used to represent Anguilla, now proudly flying the flag for Great Britain. Mike Rogers, he's having a great season, Rogers. 1.97 this year. He's had a lot of races around about the 10-second mark. Right then, Taekwondo Tracy, national champion last year, second this year, 10.21 in qualification. Needs a good run there from a slightly lonely lane. Yoshihini Kurui, Asian champion over 100 metres. Very close to PB form this season. Zarnell Hughes, the European champion from last year, first in Heat 3 in 10.08. He looked good. He's pumped for this, but he needs to be. There are quick men outside him. Jimmy V. Coe, he might not be in 9.86 shape, but he looked very, very good 
in qualification with his 10-0-8. He's coming back to something like his best form. Akani Sabini flying the flag for South Africa, the Rainbow Nation, the Commonwealth champion, the African champion. 10-0-1 in qualifying. Mike Rogers, Pan American champion at the age of, what is he now, 34, his first major title. He's enjoying a, a late bloom of form in his career. Arthur Cisse, he's in pretty much the best shape we've ever seen him in. 9-9-3 earlier this season, African medalist got the silver there. And Filippo Tortu broke the national record going under 10 seconds. The Italian world junior silver medalist three years ago, fifth in the European final last year. Right then, third semi-final in the men's 100 metres. You're watching live here on the second night of athletics in the 2019 IAAF World Championships. Tracy Jamaica two, Karui Japan three, Hughes Great Britain four, Vico France in five, Simbine South Africa six, Rogers the United States in seven, Cisse Ivory Coast in eight, Tortu Italy in lane nine. Only two guaranteed to join the likes of Christian Coleman into the final. Simbine will start fourth from the left-hand side, the Commonwealth champion. Hughes third from the right-hand side. Seven. It's a good start from Akani Simbine. Mike Rogers trying to get away well. Nobody yet to really put their nose in front. Now Simbine begins to drive. Simbine and Zarnel Hughes will be there. 10 0 1. Excellent running from the two men in lane six and four. And the subplot here is that we need to watch the clock. Justin Gatlin, 10 0 9. Jamili, 10 1 3. Those are the men in the non-automatic spots. What a great run from Sabine and an excellent second place from Hughes, who you'd have to say is slightly better or more favoured over the 200 metres. Good qualification from both. It was. Simbini looked good last night. He's just replicated that with the same performance. 10-0-1 in the heat, 10-0-1 in the semi-final. Zarnell Hughes is favoured over the 200 metres rather than the one but he came through really strong towards the end. In fact, it was actually Kiriku from Japan who had the best start in lane three. But once we got about 60 metres into the running, it's when the big men really picked up the pace. Here we go. Not much actually separating them there with that angle from the start. It was almost a blanket start, like we say. J Japanese Kiriku had a great start, but this is when Sabini starts coming through there in lane six. Hughes looks to his left, he looks to his right, there's only one person in front of him at the end and he makes his automatic qualification to the final. Just looking at Rogers there, he looks like he's just tying up a little bit. Towards the end, he's almost, you know, shutting his eyes as he runs compared to Simbini, who's just looking at the clock, he knows he's won it, just what time have I run? That was very, very impressive from Akani Simbini. Well, here's the result of the third semi-final in the men's 100 metres. Akani Sambini and Zarnell Hughes were clearing away with one and two. Filippo Tortu in third goes through by one thousandth of a second. Taekwondo Tracy just a single thousandth behind him, which is why, despite the fact that they've both got the same time, Tracy misses out on the final. Tortu will be in it. This is the lineup for what promises to be a great climax today, too, here in Doha. Christian Coleman, the favourite. Akani Sabini looked really good.